Hey everyone, how's it going? In today's video, I wanted to talk about my experience interviewing at Google for a full-time software engineering position. For me, it started back in the fall of 2018 when I was just starting my junior year and looking for an internship for the summer of 2019. I had just finished uh, my first software engineering internship, which was at Twitter, and I got a return offer to do another internship there. But I was looking around at other companies to see if maybe something else would interest me. But my experience at Twitter was really good. I really liked the product and I had a really good team and I worked on something that I really enjoyed so I ended up deciding to go back to Twitter for that summer. But I had already applied to some other places and a Google recruiter had contacted me to try to set up a call to start the interviewing process. But I told them that I decided to go back to Twitter and that I would reach out to them in the future if I ever changed my mind or wanted to apply for a different role. Then during my last internship at Twitter during the summer, um, that same recruiter reached out to me and told me that their full-time new grad application was going to open up in August 1st and that she wanted to set up a call so that we could talk a little bit about working at Google, the whole application process, and whether or not I'd be interested in applying this year. So we had the call and basically, yeah, she went through uh, the different uh, campuses that Google has. She asked me what kind of software engineering roles I wanted to work in and she told me a bit about the application process. And the way that the process goes is you apply online and if you get through the initial re resume screening, they send you a coding challenge. Now for me, the coding challenge was two questions. Uh, neither question was particularly hard, but they also weren't particularly easy. It was just like a standard coding challenge. Then if you pass that, there is a phone interview afterwards, but the recruiter explained to me that if you apply, if a recruiter reaches out to you to apply, they can typically get you past the phone screening so that if you pass the coding challenge, you can skip the phone screening and go straight to the on-site interview. So that's pretty much what happened with me. I finished uh, the coding challenge sometime like mid-August and once I, they reached out to me that I passed the coding challenge, they let me um, pick a date to start interviewing on campus. So I ended up setting a date to interview with them uh, pretty much mid-September when I was back on campus and close to the Mountain View campus, expecting that I was going to interview there. But they ended up having me interview in the Sunnyvale office, which uh, isn't as big as their main campus in Mountain View, but it is very new. A lot of the buildings barely open, like from 2017, 2018, and some of the buildings are even barely now starting to be made. And they have a lot of their cloud teams working there. So when I went for my on-site interview, uh, I got to talk to a lot of engineers from that, from those teams specifically, and I got to check out a lot of the new buildings that they had, which was super nice. The cafeterias were really good. Um, and yeah, so basically what happened was um, I Ubered there from campus, uh, ready to start my interviews. I think they started at about 9 a.m. or like 9.30 a.m. And so I waited in the reception desk and my first uh, interviewer came down and took me up to the room where I would start my interviews. And basically what I had ahead of me were five different interviews, four technical interviews and one behavioral interview, as well as a lunch with a Google engineer that I was paired up with. So before the interviews, Google sends an email with a bunch of practice material that you can use, videos that go through what they expect from interviewees and whatnot. And in that information, they say that you can technically use a laptop to do the coding interview or a whiteboard if you wanted to. But when I got to my room, there was no laptop. And the interviewer said that we could wait and get one, but I thought that it was probably the best idea to use as much time as I can, and I just went ahead and started using the whiteboards. And the questions themselves, obviously I can't say what the questions exactly were, but they were basically the typical questions that a new grad might get, the typical graph algorithm questions, depth for search, breadth for search, that kind of stuff, uh, with slight twists to them. Um, basically nothing was too difficult. Um, but they also weren't, again, too easy, similar to how the coding challenge was. And I thought that I did particularly well on two of them. I remember it was my first and my third technical interview. And I struggled a bit in my second interview. Um, looking back on the second interview, it was kind of a simple error where I figured out a way to do it, but it was more complex than it needed to be. And the interviewer seemed like they really wanted me to get the more efficient way to do it and it didn't really hit me until the very end of the interview. So yeah, it was interesting because all of the interviewers had like their own different style of interviewing. One asked me more questions, asked me more questions about the performance of my, um, of my implementation. 
Um, other interviewers were more quiet. Some would like to give hints. Some try to get to know me a little better. For example, some of the people that were supposed to interview me for technical questions also ended up giving me some behavioral questions. For example, one of them asked me what I like to spend my time on when I'm at school, outside of my academic work, how I enjoyed my uh, time at Twitter, um, basically stuff like that that wasn't necessarily technical. So that's how the technical interviews were. I think the most interesting part of the whole experience though was having lunch with an engineer there because they technically aren't interviewing there so they really don't have any stake in the game of whether or not you get a position there or not. So they can kind of just answer any question that you want. You can ask any silly question that you might have, feel completely calm and relaxed and just kind of learn more about the company and the specific office that you're at. Um, but one thing that stuck out to me from that experience was I remember that I asked my person that I was uh, having lunch with, I asked them uh, what kind of opportunities are there to do some community service around the area through Google and I remember he kind of laughed and was like yeah most of the people here are kind of too busy to really get into that stuff so I'm not sure and to me that was a bit of a red flag I felt like if you don't have time to do something so important like that then are you just super overworked? Um, can I expect a good work-life balance? Like what exactly is the deal here? The behavioral interview was the last interview and it was the typical questions like, what was one time where you had to like face adversity? Uh, what was one time where you were working in a group and you took uh, leadership? Um, simple questions like that. It was more conversational and when it ended, there was opportunities to ask any questions that I might have. And in general, the experience was super nice. The cafeteria food was super great and all of my interviewers were were super nice, even if some didn't talk as much or just kind of like went through the motions of the interviewing, um, everything went well. So I walked out of the interview feeling okay. I knew that I did fine on the behavioral interview and I felt that I did well on three of the technical interviews, but I knew that I could have done a bit better in one of them. So I wasn't too confident that I would get the position, but I knew that I had a chance, especially because when I was waiting for a hiring committee decision, it ended up taking about six weeks for me to finally hear back. And by the time I was waiting three, four weeks, I figured, okay, if I did particularly bad, then they would have just rejected me already. So I must have some sort of a chance. And so I just kept waiting and waiting, but I ended up getting a call from a recruiter and they told me that they couldn't offer me a position then. But it ended up being all right because I had gotten a return offer from Twitter. And like I said before, I really liked working there, so I felt fine. And that's probably one big piece of advice that I can give when trying to interview at these places like Google or Facebook, any fan company, really, if you're really set on trying to make it to one of these companies, it can be really beneficial if you interview at some more medium level companies and try to get an offer there. So that way you can lower the stakes for yourself and you can walk into the interview knowing, hey, even if worst case, I don't get this position, at least I have a great backup plan and I'll be fine. If you have nothing else going in, it might be a little more stressful knowing, okay, if I fail this, what am I gonna do? I don't really necessarily have a plan. Um, and on top of that, if you have a position already lined up, then you can use that offer to try to negotiate any uh, new offers that you might get. So yeah, that was my experience interviewing at Google. No, I did not get the job, but I learned a lot. Everybody was super friendly and I really appreciate that I was able to have that experience talking to recruiters and whatnot. And I appreciate uh, the people that helped me get through that process. So yeah, I hope that this video is a little bit informative. Hopefully just getting a picture of what the whole process was like helps uh, everything be a little more clear. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them in the comment section. And I appreciate it if you like this video and hit the subscribe button. So hopefully this video can reach other people who might find it useful. Thank you.